For many years, people went on expeditions in search of the Fountain of Youth. A group of friends goes out in search of their professor Hopper, who embarked on a journey to find his parents and hasn't come back. They get trapped in a mysterious cave where the concept of time works differently, and they soon realize that what they thought was an exciting expedition turns out to be something they could never have imagined. Today I am going to explain in science fiction film called Time Trap. Hopper and his dog named Boss find his parents' abandoned van somewhere in the mountains and he takes the journal he uncovers inside the vehicle. They search around the area for any clues of where his parents might have gone and they stumble upon a strange cave. Hopper leaves Boss outside and goes into the cave. He sees a man standing inside the cave. The man appears to be standing still and doesn't answer Hopper when he calls out to him. When Hopper gets a little closer, he spots a pistol in the man's pocket and he immediately retreats and goes back home with his dog. He calls Jackie, one of his students, and asks her to arrange a climbing pack for him. He also asks her not to inform Taylor, another of his students who would want to go with him if he found out. When he gets home to pick up the pack from Jackie, Taylor's there with her and she has somehow told him about Hopper's plans. Taylor asks to follow Hopper but he refuses. He tells them he's going with Boss and that he'll only be gone a few days. The next day he drives back to the mountains with his dog. He ties a rope to a huge boulder as an anchor just over an underground cave in case he needs to go down there to hide from anything. He then proceeds to the mysterious cave he saw the previous day. As he goes further into the cave, the man starts to move slowly in the opposite direction and when he's very close, the man walks away in real time. He approaches an invisible barrier that seems to be made of moisture and he crosses it to the other side. Two days later, Taylor visits Jackie early in the morning so they can go find Hopper. He suggests they should rent a truck but she decides they should call Taylor's friend, Kara whose dad has an off-road truck. On the phone, Kara claims she's helping her half-sister, Veeves with a project and Taylor suggests their expedition would guarantee Veeves an excellent grade on her project. Kara's dad agrees to give them the truck. He always admired Taylor who was a star football player when he was in high school. He likes Taylor so much that even constantly suggests that Kara should date him but she continues to claim they're just friends even when it's quite obvious something is going on between them. On their way to Hopper's last location, Veeves is recording the whole experience on camera and Taylor fills them in on the details of the expedition. He tells them how some people went in search of the Fountain of Youth but never returned. Veeves asks them to carry her friend, Furby, along with them. They pick him up from his house while his overprotective mother gives them instructions to keep her son safe. Everyone is in the vehicle and so they head out to the mountains. Furby provides everyone with cameras to record the adventure. They find the van that Hopper talked about with the help of a satellite map. They check inside and find pictures inside and realize that the vehicle belonged to Hopper's parents. When Jackie's asked Furby to help her open the trunk of the van, he trips on a rope. They follow the rope and it leads them into a cave. They get to a part where it's too narrow and Jackie crawls into it. She finds that the rope has been severed. The group assumes that it belongs to Hopper and they decide to climb down to look for him. Furby stays back to keep watch while the others go down into the cave by ropes. Kara proposes that Veeve stay behind but she insists and the others support her. As the four of them climb down, they approach the same invisible barrier that Hopper encountered. Meanwhile, after Hopper crosses it, he notices the light outside the cave seems strange and he immediately runs out of the cave and is shocked at what he finds. When he comes out, the place is dark. He searches for his dog but he doesn't find him. The bushes are all grown and it seems like he's been there for months. He tries to drive away but his batteries are dead. He comes across Kara's father's truck and it appears to have been there for so long. It's rusty and weeds thrive inside it. He searches for batteries but finds Jackie's bag and searches for her but he doesn't find her. Hopper goes back into the cave, this time he uses glow sticks to create a trail behind him. Taylor and the rest climb down and continue to search for Hopper. They hear strange noises and try to climb back up but when Jackie tries to, someone cuts the rope causing her to fall and dislocate her ankle and Taylor who tries to catch breaks his wrist in the process. They assume it's Furby, when they keep calling and he doesn't answer, they realize that it's not him. After some time, Furby responds but he sounds very weak, they go into the other chamber in the cave where they think Furby might be leaving Jackie to rest since she can't walk. When Kara climbs a large boulder to get to another severed rope, she sees Furby's body just under the rock. He had tried to climb down into the cave but someone cut his rope. Jackie hears them and crawls to meet them where they are and find out what's going on. They collect Furby's camera to watch what happened. Furby had waited hours for them and they didn't come back so he decided to look around and found Hopper's Jeep in the journal. In the book, he saw the fountain of youth that they were searching for. 
In the recording, they also find out that Hopper had gone in search of the fountain to get some of its water, which supposedly has healing powers so he could heal his sick daughter. They realize that they have been gone for days in real time, but had only been in the cave for an hour. They all watch the recording and see the skylight change as Furby climbed down the rope Hopper tied before he fell. After watching the heartbreaking video, they start to argue. Taylor blames himself and apologizes for getting them involved. Kara decides to climb back up since she's the only one capable of doing so. Before she goes up, Taylor gives her a GPS beacon and tells her to alert it once she gets to the surface since there was no service in the cave. He suggests that the crazy lights may be due to days and nights passing quickly, and that's the reason Furby's time and theirs didn't match. When she crosses the barrier and gets to the other side, she sees that the whole area is deserted and dry, and that something is wrong with the air. Even the rope she climbed with is missing. She searches the area for a signal as she tries to activate the beacon. She's still trying to get a signal when she sees an enormous dust storm heading toward her. She looks up at the clouds and notices a strange structure floating in the sky. She runs back to the cave to tell the others, but when she does they claim she had only been up there for seconds. She's pissed off that they don't believe her and gives them her can to watch her tape recording. They're confused when they see that she's saying the truth because down in the cave, she had only been gone three seconds while she was up there for almost 30 minutes. Taylor confirms his theory that time passed slower in the cave than on the surface. He also suggests that there was no one cutting their ropes, rather it was friction that cut them. Jackie claims that they might be in the Fountain of Youth since if time stops in the cave, they remain young forever. Taylor goes to collect the rest of Furby's rope and realizes that his radio had been smashed. He recalls that when they watched the tape the first time, the radio was fine. They watch the recording again and fast forward to the part where Furby responded to them. In the tape, a strange man that had heard Furby came to kill him and destroyed his radio. The four friends weep and look away as they can't even bear to watch how their friend was murdered by a primitive man. It's obvious that they're not alone in the cave and those sounds they heard were probably the cavemen or maybe even more. Kara decides to climb up again with the rope so that the others can use it to get to the surface. As she's climbing the rocks, Veeves watches the dead friend's footage again and notices the way the sun shifted from its position on the horizon. Taylor and Jackie join her to check it out and they realize that the light flashes coming from the surface were not days and nights, but presumably revolutions, causing the change in seasons that they see in the tape when they slow down the footage. They're still trying to understand the video when a large pole is shot down into the cave. Immediately the futuristic gadget turns into a big ladder. Taylor suggests Kara climb up the ladder, but as soon as she gets on it, a large man starts to climb down the ladder. Kara immediately retreats down the ladder and the huge man wearing what appears to be a special suit helmet advances toward them. As soon as he tries to get them, the caveman attacks him, and when he's distracted from fighting him off, they take the chance to run away, deeper into the cave. The giant man traps the caveman and goes after them after shrinking the big ladder into a little device. They run farther and farther into the cave, navigating the bends as quickly as they can while being careful around the stalactites and stalagmites in the cave. It's even more difficult because Jackie's ankle is injured and they have to support her as she makes an effort to hop as fast as they run. They stumble upon a smaller compartment in the cave and see torches of fire in it. They see a woman who appears to have died a few moments ago. They recognize the woman from the picture in the van they saw outside, she's Hopper's mother who went missing. A few meters away, they see Hooper's father lying presumably dead. They've been missing for 40 years but don't look a day older than they were in the pictures. Three other cavemen are currently on the other side of the small cave and they seem to have just murdered a man who looks just like the man Hopper saw in the cave the first time because the caveman had just collected a gun from him. The cavemen seed them and they charge at them. Taylor tells the girls to run out of the small cave as he tries to fight them off. He takes a rock and uses it to defend himself but he is outnumbered and even his athletic prowess isn't enough for him to defeat the barbaric creatures. They knock him out cold when one slams his head against the wall of the call. He doesn't stop there and continues to pound on Taylor's unconscious body before eventually following the others to pursue the girls. The three girls hide in another small cave and wait. When the cavemen pass by the cave and they don't see or hear Taylor, they become worried. Kara goes back to look for him while Jackie and Veeve stay put. She finds him lying in the cave with blood all over his head. Taylor isn't breathing and appears to have died. She's still wailing and yelling at him to wake up when the tall man that looks like he came from the future finds her holding Taylor's body in her arms. She assumes he wants to attack her, but he just walks by them to a fountain inside the cave. They didn't see the fountain the first time because of the caveman. The tall man takes a vial and collects some of the water from it. He is about to leave the cave when he looks back at Kara still crying. He advances towards her and tries to drag the body from her. She attempts to fight him off but he is too strong and so he succeeds and drags Taylor's body to the water. 
He places him in the fountain and submerged him. Kara sees this and assumes he's trying to drown the body. She attacks him jumping into the water to fight him off. He gestures for her to calm down and not long after, Taylor wakes up. Kara embraces him, glad to see him alive. They're still jubilating when a caveman comes into the cave. He grabs one of the torches and tries to attack them. The giant fights them off but they're strong and they give him a tough time. They forcefully take off his mask and immediately the man finds it difficult to breathe. They give him a serious beating using his helmet to hit him in the head several times. He finally musters the energy to hold them down by their necks with one of his weird gadgets just like he did the first caveman. After subduing them, he collapses and appears very weak. Taylor and Kara rush to him to assist him with his mask, but it's too late. He looks at his wrist and he's running out of time. Meanwhile, at the other side of the cave where they try to climb out, the sky appears to turn green and something strange seems likely to happen. Kara calls out to Jackie and Veeves to alert them. They go into the cave and see what just happened. The tall man pushes a button and the collars he placed on a caveman's necks release a gas that makes them fall asleep. Taylor is still trying to understand how he's okay and notices that his hand which was previously broken is now completely fine. The man in the suit is still struggling to breathe. His helmet is broken and he tries to tell them something but they can't understand what he's saying. He seems to be speaking a language they do not understand. He then projects a hologram displaying a news report of five missing teens. On the news, Kara and Veeves see their father asking the people to help him find his daughters who had been missing for two weeks. The girls start crying when they see how miserable their father looks. The man plays another hologram, this one seems to have been recorded way after the first one. They watch the news report of how humans are planning to leave Earth as it would soon be inhabitable for them. The government planned to go into space on a vessel they called the Arch. The ship is the massive structure that Kara had seen when she climbed out to look for a signal the first time. The ship is about 15 miles long and 2 miles across. They claim the ship would have a carrying capacity of 250,000 people and once in orbit would make use of the world's first hyper-accelerator that would enable them to send spaceships as far as planet Mars. After the hologram turns off, the man from the future appears to be dead. Kara consoles her sister when they realize that even if they climb out of the cave, there might be nothing up there anymore. Jackie suggests that they leave and try to get to the surface, but she's afraid that they don't know what they'll encounter at the surface. Taylor collects the device that transformed into a ladder from the tall man from the future, as that's what they intend to use to escape. Taylor spots a familiar bag in front of a tunnel, it's Hopper's bag and he thinks that he must have gone down the tunnel. Taylor suggests they go looking for Hopper, but Kara refuses explaining that they gave to leave. Taylor insists on going after Hopper and grabs the gun they found with the caveman. He checks the gun and there are still four bullets in it. He tells the girls to go get Furby while he goes to look for the professor. Taylor goes down the tunnel with a flashlight in one hand and the gun in the other. He finds the trail of glow sticks that Hopper had left behind and he follows it. He finds a room full of cavy people that have been shot except for a little cave girl who was trying to save her mother by pouring the healing water on her wound. She sneers at Taylor as he observes her. He assumes that Hopper might be nearby and continues to search for him. He finds Hopper crawling and injured on his back. Hopper points at the barrier which is no longer invisible but now a mystical blue color. On the other side of it, a caveman who has been shot and a little girl appears to be frozen in time. Hopper tells him that the girl is his sister who was running from the caveman and passed the barrier. Taylor looks further and sees a massive battle and conquistadors who came in search of the fountain. But the battle is also paused. Hopper explains that the barrier is the fountain's defense against people who sought after it. He claims that it has layers with each one having a different time speed from the last. Taylor tries to pass through it but Hopper warns him to stop. The girls call out to Taylor and he helps Hopper to sit upright before going to assist them with Furby. Taylor tries to get Hoover to follow him to the small fountain they found but he claims he won't make it. Taylor then decides to bring the water to him instead. He tells him not to bother and that he should just leave before other cavemen find him. He gives Hopper the gun and tells him he's not leaving him behind before going to meet the girls. The cavemen that were shot seem to be waking up after the cava girl poured the water on them. Taylor carries Furby and places him in the fountain after Jackie's ankle had healed. The cavemen wake up and try to attack Hopper and search for the teens. Hooper shoots at them unaware that the gun has only four shots in it. He quickly exhausts his ammunition and yells at them to run away. Veeves uses the liquid from a lamp they found to set the entrance of the cave on fire to stop the cavemen from coming in. Taylor places the device and activates it to turn to a ladder. They try to climb up as fast as they can to escape from the primitive men after them. Kara, who is at the top of the ladder, notices that there's a lot of water just above the barrier. She tries to pass through it when a strange creature with long claws grabs her by the hand and pulls her into the water. 
Taylor tries to pull her out of the water when one of the cavemen pushes a button on a ladder and deactivates it, causing them to fall. As they fall to the ground, everything stops and they are stuck in time along with the cavemen at the bottom of the ladder. The teens remain in the time trap for a while before long robotic cables come out of the water and immediately they grab them, the time goes back to normal. They hang in the air and the cavemen attempt to pull them down when Kara emerges out of the water again wearing a futuristic suit like the man before. She tells them that they shouldn't worry and that they're not leaving Hopper and Furby behind. The cables pull them up into the water and then afterwards some other cables locate Hopper and Furby in the cave. Furby wakes up from underwater, and when he opens his eyes, he finds himself in a strange facility. He calls out for his friends. He looks out a large window and sees planet Earth. He's still looking out the window when Hopper wakes up and comes out of the same pool of water. They're both confused and afraid when Kara Taylor and Jackie walk in wearing cool black suits. Jackie casually asks Furby if he wants to go to Mars, and he realizes they're on a spaceship. Hopper's parents and sister also emerge from other pools in the room. Jackie claims that they're a big deal on the arch and decides to give them a tour. We see the ship go into hyperspeed and our heroes travel deeper into space. 